right, Cube, so we're finally here to talk about the ending of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, I do want to say, with this particular video, I don't know that we're going to go like crazy, super deep dive theory type shit or anything like that. I mostly just want to get kind of my immediate thoughts out there for what I think is going on with the ending of the game, kind of the big key moments. And then maybe another time we can kind of more intricately look at everything or maybe look at other theories and stuff and you know discuss those. Kind of like we usually do on the channel here. It's been long enough, we're just going to hop right into it. So the multiple timeline shit, something we've talked about for a long time on the channel. The theory for the longest time was our group's in one timeline, Zach's in another timeline. There's also potential for like a third timeline or some shit, which I mean, given what we see in Rebirth, that seems to be a possibility. But it was initially two timelines. And then, but there's a difference in whether or not it was two actual timelines or if it was our group's in the real world and then we have Zach in like the live stream thinking he's doing some shit, but he's really like in between death or whatever the fuck. And to be honest, through a lot of the playthrough of Rebirth, that's kind of where I started to gravitate towards. Even though I was more in like, before Rebirth was in the Zach is Alive camp, I started to get the vibe that he was dead. And he might still be dead. We're not going to write that off entirely. But once you get towards the end of the game, or I guess really at the end of the game, I mean, Sephiroth confirms that there's multiple timelines and we see it ourselves. Behold, the true nature of reality. When the boundaries of fate are breached, new worlds are born. The planet encompasses a multitude of worlds, ever unfolding. Some quickly perish, while others endure. Yet even the most resilient worlds are doomed to fade. Some people write this off as, like, it's Sephiroth, he's a bad guy, he's lying, trying to manipulate clouds, so on and so forth. But a lot of those people are the ones who already didn't believe or don't want to believe the multiple timelines, multiple world theory thing. Uh, but there's no reason why telling Cloud about a multiverse would help manipulate him. That just doesn't even make any sense at all. But also, like, several dimensions about how, you know, there's the different worlds, but some of them get destroyed, but some of them do endure. And when he says that, you actually see in the background, like, the world that Zack and Biggs are in. Because you see the rift in the sky, you see the, the Biggs doesn't wear the bandana, but he's got, like, the neckerchief thing. Towards the end of the game, we're showing multiple different stamps. Like, up to Rebirth, of course, we only had two, which our groups was the Beagle, and then Zack's was Terrier stamp logo, right? And when we get to the end of the game, we're showing, like, three other ones, dude. There's the kind of, like, pug one that you see Biggs eating from a bag of chips. Then you see, like, the black and white dog. I don't know what kind of breed of dog that is. Whenever, like, Aerith and Cloud are doing, like, their little date thing in uh, the slums. And you actually see, really quickly, there's one scene whenever Zack is on the steps of the church. You see Johnny carrying whatever breed of dog that might be. Looking into it, it seems like that black and white dog is maybe a Pomeranian. And then what Johnny's carrying in his arm is a Sheba. But we're showing five different breeds of stamp, right? Three brand new ones when it comes to FF7 Rebirth. I don't know how you could even like argue the multiverse discussion now at this point it's kind of ridiculous to even argue it like there's it's kind of one thing when it was just remake and there's just the two two different logos that was it now we're looking at like five different stamp breeds as of right now when it comes to the second game this whole third game to get through i don't know it just seems like pretty obvious to me we're also directly showing this multiverse shit with zach whenever he's in the tunnel on the motorcycle trying to decide if he wants to go right to hojo for a cure to save cloud or go left to the sector six reactor to save biggs and there's a terrier logo behind him on the wall and he goes right. So he goes to the Shinner building for the cure. We get the cutscene of that where he's like on the motorcycle about to fight Shinner troops. But then we get a scene a little bit later on where he's just at the Sector 6 reactor with Biggs and there's a different logo, right? That's where we get the Pug logo and shit. To the right, Shinner HQ. Left, Reactor 6. Which will get blown up along with Biggs unless I stop him. Hang in there, Cloud. I got you. <laughs> Pretty sure I only asked to meet with Professor Hojo. Not a whole platoon. Hold on, Biggs. I'm coming. <sighs> what gives? Reactor busted? Admittedly, I don't know everything that's going on here. I don't know if this is meant to be the same Zack. Like, went to the Shinner building, got the cure or whatever for Cloud, but maybe also went to the Sector 6 reactor to help Biggs. Or is this like a different Zack in the Pug timeline versus the Terrier timeline, right? I don't, I don't entirely know. Because we see him make the decision to go to the Shinner building. We get like the little rainbow fucking light coming from the other tunnel, that type of shit. So there's some sort of shift that happened when he made his decision. So I don't know if this is just a Zack that hopped timelines or if the timeline itself shifted because of his decision. I don't know. We also do see with like the Pug big Zack scene that the Sector 6 reactor isn't pumping up any Mako. There's none. It's bone dry. It's pumping up dirt. And Biggs does say that the live stream is dry. So this seems to be another world, another timeline, whatever, where the live stream is completely depleted. So this is a world that is 
actively dying, right? There's no live stream left, apparently. This is according to Biggs. Seems it's all out of Mako. I'm still sucking away, but the only thing it's pulling up is dirt. Uh, the live stream's bone dry. Bomb one reactor, bomb them all. Planet's done either way. The point of all this is that I think when it comes to the multiverse discussion, the different worlds, different timelines, whatever terms you want to use, I think we can put that discussion to rest. Because we're shown this in-game, we're told this in-game, we're seeing Zack actively hop in timelines or some shit. I mean, he's in his own, like, live stream world at one point, and he, when he touches Cloud's shoulder and he joins in in the final boss fight all of a sudden, right? I so, I hear you've been pretty busy. Whoa! I will say this seems a little bit weird because I was a little unsure what I think is going on there. I do think that this is really Zach, like the Zach we've been following the whole game, because he's on his own journey doing his own thing, right? He's in the white void by himself, punches the shoulder, joins up, right? But we do see for a brief moment when we go to Cloud's perspective, we zoom out from the eyes, and behind Cloud, there's nothing. The camera spins around, and then Zach's there. So I'll slow down, show it here about half speed. You see there's nobody behind Cloud in this moment. Camera spins around, and then Zach's there, right? Also, what we're seeing there is like the moment before Zach joins, so it switches to Cloud's perspective. Zach hasn't joined yet. Camera spins around, and that's when he's like kind of joined up with Cloud potentially, right? But initially, I just wasn't sure what that was. Was this like Cloud trying to get motivation from Zach, similar to like Avid Children, right? But I don't think that's what it is, only because this Zach is, we see him do his own thing, right? We see him in the White Void, whatever that is, live stream, whatever. We see him doing all the different shit throughout the entire game, right? We see him fight Bizarre Sephiroth by himself, right? So I do think that this is like a sentient Zach. It's, I guess, a matter of whether or not he's actually alive. It comes down to what exactly the different worlds thing is, the little multiverse shit, because Sephiroth does mention that the world encompasses a multitude of worlds, so. The planet encompasses a multitude of worlds ever unfolding is this all within the live stream and if it is are these worlds that have existed for a very long time right there's you know the other worlds we go to the other timelines of the different stamps have they existed for you know thousands millions of years or are they very temporary worlds that have only existed for you know days or something hours potentially i don't know i don't know nothing about how it all works right but if it's all within the live stream you can make an argument that technically maybe the zek isn't alive this could be like you know live stream zag zek that's not fully dead kind of hopping worlds within the live stream trying to like help or whatever i think there's an argument for that only because whenever we see them in like the shiba world where johnny has the stamp under his arm we do see Sephiroth like slash him and it seems like he would die there and he goes to the white void which is usually like live stream type shit within the ff7 world and then he like fights it right he he fights dying essentially and that's when he comes across cloud and joins up with cloud to help him Sephiroth. no not you It isn't over yet. We can almost have like a live stream black situation where this is like, a, you know, Zach has died obviously, but not fully died, hasn't accepted his death, doesn't want to die. Maybe he attached himself to Cloud too, very similar to Sephiroth, right? Maybe that's why he comes across Cloud, maybe he can hop timelines like that, help Cloud because he's refusing to fully die or hasn't fully accepted death, something along those lines. It's kind of hard to say just because like Sephiroth slashes him, but he doesn't like bleed out and die or something. He like, gets pulled down into like a void by the whispers that are with Sephiroth. So they might just be pulling him into the life stream or something along those lines because it doesn't really look like he died in that moment, right? So it's kind of hard to say exactly what's going on here. But to also kind of add on to all this, we have like the fight that Zack does with Bizarre Sephiroth or Sephiroth are born or whatever the hell his name is. And afterwards, it seems like he accepts his fate. It seems like he dies, but then he wakes up in the church, right? And specifically... It appears to be the church from Remake, right? It's the flowers are bloomed, they're perfectly fine. They're not as like bad looking as they were at the end of episode intermission, but also the cross. The famous fucking cross I've been talking about for years at this point. At the end of episode intermission, when Zach goes into the church, you clearly see the wooden cross, the wooden cross that has been there in like every iteration of the Sector 5 church except for Remake. And then the cross that's there at the end of Rebirth for Zach is the stone cross. So it almost seems like he potentially joined up with the remake timeline finally and maybe he's there with our group he's over here in midgar and sanctified church while we're you know doing whatever we're doing at the end of rebirth so this is it huh time to say goodbye for now see ya did i nah i couldn't have dreamt that it all felt way too real.
Here, the bigger picture in the background is obviously a screen grab from Rebirth. You can see the stone cross in the back, but it's kind of obscured by light. Bottom right, of course, is the ending of episode intermission. It's the wooden cross. But it's like I'm going overboard here with trying to prove that Zack is in like the remake timeline, or our main group's timeline, Beagle timeline, whatever you want to say. But also, like, with the bottom left picture, screen grab from Chapter 8. You can see in behind Cloud and Aerith, there's like this blue tarped thing that's also there for Zack at the end of Rebirth. To kind of further drive this home, something I never noticed before until making this video, there's a piece of wood that goes like kind of through Eris flowers in like the remake timeline, and Beagle timeline, and it's there for Zach. We see it in you know, multiple different angles. And that piece of wood's not there laying in the flowers with the church at the end of episode intermission. I know it's kind of crazy. We're looking at some weird shit here. We're looking at fucking tarps and pieces of wood and in, in flowers, but I think it matters. They also have like Zach, you know, focus on the flowers that are really healthy and normal looking, whereas at the end of episode intermission, they were kind of trampled on and look like they're kind of dying maybe a little bit. Right, so I just wanted to drive home the fact that it does appear like Zack is in the Beagle timeline, our main group's timeline. What that means exactly, I don't know. Maybe he's going to be like actually alive and helping us within the third game. Let's be completely honest, they didn't give him his own like fighting style and shit, his own moves for no reason. I think he's going to be a factor in the third game in some capacity. At this point, we're more than 10 minutes into the video. We've talked about Zack quite a bit. We've talked about Multiverse quite a bit. We've yet to discuss Aerith. And just to give you like a flat answer right now, I think she died. I mean, it's pretty clear that she died at the end of the game, at least from our group's perspective, right? We see blood on the ground. We see her limp in Cloud's arms. We see blood on Cl uh, Sephiroth's sword, right? Our group's mourning her. It's cloud where things are a little bit different, right? And I can't quite tell what I think is happening here. I don't know if this is Aerith from the live stream trying to console Cloud and keep him from completely breaking down, or if it's just Cloud wanting her to be alive, just pretending like she's alive, thinking she's alive, that sort of thing. But it's pretty clear, at least from our group's perspective, everybody else besides Cloud, Aerith for sure died, right? And right there at the end of the scenes that I just showed, like it's the water burial, right? We're all sitting near the water, everybody's sad and depressed, and like Cloud has like a conversation with Aerith right there that nobody else can see, right? That's the thing. Aerith. Is she really there, or is it Cloud just, like, wanting her to be there? Again, like, manifesting her to help, to try to pretend like she's not dead. Because it seems like he, through the rest of the end of the game, thinks that she's alive or hasn't accepted her death, right? That seems to be what's going on here, at least pretty obviously for most people. But I don't know if this is truly Aerith, like, herself, like, from a different timeline, trying to talk to Cloud, try to help Cloud, or if it's Aerith from the live stream, right? Or if it's all just in Cloud's head. Like, none of it's real, right? There's no Aerith at all. He just wants her to be there. He's trying to pretend like she's not dead, that sort of thing. We'll say, however, that it does seem like Aerith is there in some capacity, only because at the very end when we're all hanging out by the tiny Bronco, Red 13 does seem to sense her, right? Cloud's, like, talking to her, sees her, has a conversation with her. Red 13 senses her. So it seems like, at the very least, it's really Aerith there somehow, some way. Livestream, timeline shit, whatever. <sighs> Aerith? Actually, kind of obviously, they're rewatching the scene. Like, Aerith is there absent of Cloud, right? She's over there with Red 13, and Tifa touches Red 13. He senses her, whatever the fuck. So it does seem like this is an actual Aerith there, potentially. Maybe he's similar to, like, the resolution scene we get in, in Remake, where it's like she's there talking to Cloud, but it's not really her because she's in the Shinner building. It's kind of thing, right? Livestream shit, magic, something, right? She does seem to actually be there. I think it's kind of like a best of both worlds thing where we got her death, but she's not fully dead, right? She's in the live stream, she's still helping the group, she's still trying to help Cloud. It's similar to like Zack, right? What we talked about with Zack, it does seem like Zack's potentially dead, kind of helping from the live stream, hopping worlds and shit. But at the end of everything, it seems like he's in our world potentially, hopefully. That'd be kind of cool. I love me some Zack. Give me more Zack shit. And it's just like Aerith helping from the live stream, like she did in the original game. It's literally nothing new, right? It's more expanded, obviously, when it comes to the original game, what they're doing with the remake project. It actually kind of mirrors the ending of the original FF7, right? Where Marlene senses Aerith as, like, the live stream is trying to help Holy defeat Meteor at the end of the game. Aerith seems to be dead, and Red 13 senses her, right? I'm not 100% where I fall on everything here when it comes to, like, Aerith's fate and shit. I think that, like, for sure she's dead. Now, is she helping Cloud from the live stream from beyond the grave? Or is this all in Cloud's head? You can go either way, because we have a really, really broken Cloud by the end of Rebirth, right? 
So you can go either way and I'd be fine with it. If it's all just in Cloud's head, like he just needs Aerith to be there so he doesn't break entirely, like he's manifesting Aerith. He needs her to talk to him. If he, if he accepts her death, he's going to break entirely, which probably happens somewhere in the third game. Or if it's Aerith herself manifesting from the live stream to help Cloud not break mentally, right? You can go either way with that and it works perfectly. There's a Genova. Like, admittedly, I haven't really looked at that, like, idea or theory. Like, I know Max talked about it, and it kind of blew up where people were, like, trashing the idea that the Aerith at the end of the game is Genova trying to manipulate Cloud. I don't see why that's that big of a deal. I mean, that's the lore of Genova, right? That 2,000 years ago, Cetra, she would take the form of people you love to manipulate you, kill you, all that other shit, right? So I wouldn't even be against that idea. We, you know, the idea, I talked about the idea that, like, the Tifa were rolling with is, like, Genova, right? That's what the whole thing was. Like, I'm not trying to manipulate Cloud by saying that Tifa died back in the Nibelheim incident, and that the Tifa has been with this entire time, is like Genova taking the form of her or whatever. I wouldn't be against the idea that Genova took the form of Aerith at the end of the game to manipulate Cloud. Like, that's what she does, man. It's a good twist. Is it my favorite idea out of the stuff we've discussed so far? Not really, but I wouldn't be against it. I think it'd be a nice little thing we get somewhere into the third game. Cloud's taking all this advice from this Aerith that's not really Aerith that's been Genova the whole time. Not a bad idea. But to kind of give you like a TLDR here at the end, the multiverse shit, I think that that is beyond confirmed with this game. It's just a matter of how it works. Are they actually literal other universes, other dimensions where these worlds exist? Or is it just all the shit that's inside the live stream that's not technically totally real? I don't know. Zach, I would say up until the very, very end of with Zach scenes, I would think that he's dead potentially somewhere in the live stream. But seeing him sitting in the church from re Remake... I think he's alive. I think he's alive by the end of the game. I think maybe the whole time he could have been in the live stream, but by the end, doing what he did, fighting death, helping fight Sephiroth, maybe brought him back to life or some shit. The Whispers brought him back to life. Aerith brought him back to life. I don't know entirely. And then with Aerith, it's obvious she died, right? Our group sees it. We see the blood. We see the blood on the sword, right? We see them doing the water burial. It's just like Cloud not accepting her death. And then I think if I had to give an answer on what I think's going on with that, it's just, it's actually her. It's actually her. Because we've seen her talk from the live stream before, Avent Children, right? With Kadaj, when he she's trying to give him, like, die fully and join up with the planet right like we hear her talking right so i think that's kind of what we're getting here with Aerith is her kind of helping cloud helping the group so when it comes to the compilation for ff7 she's similar to sephiroth never fully joined up with the live stream right she's always been able to help our group from the live stream and if we're following the ff7 timeline you know we're still early on she just died right so she can clearly still help the group and based on the og ff7 she helps the group all the way up to the end of at least the ff7 game itself by summoning the live stream to help holy defeat meteor right so this is all within the like lore that already existed with OG FF7. But those are my thoughts as it stands right now. I haven't looked into other theories, people deep dive in, that, look, you know, look at every single scene, every piece of dialogue, every background detail, that whole shit. I haven't done all that yet. Obviously, we haven't talked about everything when it comes to like the ending, like what are Sephiroth's plans? It seems like he wants to like all the worlds to join and then destroy them and like maybe gain all the live stream energy from all the different worlds. It seems like his plans are a lot more grand than they were in the original FF7. It's pretty cool. We'll probably talk about that a little more at some point. Let's see if you can't tell my voice is getting kind of raspy. We've been sitting here recording for several hours at this point, which is something I absolutely love. I love talking about FF7 for extended period of times to the point that my ass is killing me sitting here. But of course, pass it off to you guys. If you've played FF7 Rebirth, if you watched a playthrough, if you've seen the ending cutscenes, etc., etc., what are your thoughts? What do you think on the multiverse shit? What is Eris' fate ultimately? What do you think's going on with Zack? And really anything beyond that. If you just want to talk about anything, what to get your thoughts out there from FF7 Rebirth, you can do it down below for sure. This is a very spoiler video, obviously. Anyways, that's the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Social networks in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, Dash David YT. That's it. Bye. I used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like old train, we in here. Like low gain, or leave it. Like old bang.